Hey, Justin Dyson here, Dyson Apiaries. Today I'm going to be talking about making some splits. Um, just the one one of the methods that we use here and kind of getting the bees prepared for honey flow while we're doing this, this split. So uh, stick right with us. All right, so we're gonna talk about doing some splits. Um, the method I'm gonna show you today will allow you to make these splits without finding the queen. Uh, I recently had the experience of touching base with Ricky Marshall with uh, Sweet Wings Honey um, down in Mooresville. And you know, we, we did we did a, a variation of the method I'm gonna show you today. It's the method I've used a little bit of and we, so when we, when we go about doing this, we need to determine what is our end goal. So. Me personally, when when I get ready for the honey flow in the spring, I like to run single deeps and I run double deeps through the winter. So that's uh, that's one of the things I'm gonna be looking at. I'm gonna be looking to set this hive up for the honey flow with a single deep. Um, you know, another strategy may be we're just dividing this colony in half. That's a completely different strategy and I'll talk about that a little bit as we go through here. Um, another strategy may be we're just going to find some resource frames and that kind of thing and be able to come back and make some splits. So we'll talk a little more about that as we get in here. I'm gonna go ahead and jump in this hive and we'll talk through it as we go. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into this colony here. And it looks like we have a good strong colony here um, on the top. Now, like I said, what I'm after is I want to set this the lower part of this colony up for the honey flow. Uh, looks like this one is whitening the combs and uh, they may very well have queen cells. So we're setting them up for flow. I'm going to take a quick glance downstairs and I'm going to make sure that this colony, what I want is six to seven frames of brood in the bottom um, to get them ready. Now, if I was just dividing this frame in a half, we could jump ahead a little bit and I'll show you the rest of the strategy. So I'm going to split this in half here and see what we have and the good news is we don't have any queen cells i'm gonna set this aside for just a second and what i'm gonna do is i don't even necessarily have to pull a frame out most of the time if you have sealed brood you can look right down and see and if this frame here or this frame has sealed brood on it and this frame has sealed brood in it chances are everything in between has sealed brood on it and like i said i'm setting this hive up for honey flow so i want six or seven good frames of brood and then a frame or so of honey i don't necessarily have to take a frame out i'm going to um just to see what we have here Like I say, so right there I have a uh, seal brood. You can kind of glance and see if you see the queen. Um, seal brood on the next frame. And a little bit of honey there against the wall. And I can already see that there is a uh, seal brood on that frame. So this bottom box is set up pretty nicely for us. So what I'm gonna do is kind of jump ahead to the next piece of this. And you could skip going down to the bottom if you didn't really care what, what the, uh, parent hive got left with if you know if it was a really strong colony kind of like this one is you know if we're just making a split we could uh we could avoid going in the bottom there um what i'm actually doing today is i'm setting these colonies up not to do like a full hive split i'm setting them up to do nukes and so i'm gonna set this entire apiary up to be able to come back and have resources above a queen excluder and i'll show you the rest of that here in just a second 
but I'll be able to go through this apiary really quick and find those resources. So I have an empty box here. I've already kind of scraped the lip out. I'm gonna go ahead and start going through this. Like I said, we do not have to find the queen. You can do this really quickly and not even look. You can just simply shake every frame and those bees will end up in the bottom. What I like to do is just take a quick glance. That's a honey frame. I'm gonna set that one aside because it's kind of hard to shake the first frame. Sometimes you kind of mash against bees there. But we're gonna jump into this next frame. Like I say there, you know, that's a good frame of brood. I glanced really quick. I don't see the queen. And I'm just gonna shake that frame off. Now I have a clean frame, no queen, right? glance really quick look for that queen no queen shake it off just to be sure And I actually found my queen, so what happens then is I'm just gonna set this frame aside. I don't have to shake any more bees. So I'm just gonna take these frames, put them in this other box really quick. And if we didn't find the queen, we would just continue to shake through them. But since we found her, we have less work. So I'm going to pop this box off, shake those bees off. I'm going to grab myself a queen excluder here. Put the little bees down there. Now what I'm actually gonna do before I do that is I'm gonna grab this queen. I wanna put her back in the top. I'm gonna put her down there in the bottom. So now we know she's in the bottom. Queen is glued her on. Now I'm gonna put this box back on top. Slide them back together. I have a good several frames of brood there in the middle. A couple frames of honey on the outside. And what I have here now is I have, you know, those weren't great frames of brood, but I have six, seven frames of good brood. I have a couple frames of honey. And I could do two things with this. I could cut, now the bees, they're gonna migrate back up through that queen excluder and cover all that brood and cover the honey, just like they were before. They'll distribute back out, but the queen's gonna be in the bottom. So you, you only have to wait a couple hours. What I'm gonna do is come back tomorrow, but you can come back and you do two things. You can take this top box, set it off with the bees and everything in it, set it onto a another bottom board top, everything, take it to another apiary and you have a, you have a split. Put a queen cell or put a mated queen in there. Um, the, uh, what I'm actually gonna do with these is I'm, I'm gonna go down through this entire apiary and I'm gonna be creating nukes from here. So I'm gonna pull, a, I'm gonna pull three frames, three, three and a half frames of brood, a good frame of honey, 
and I'm going to set up nukes with them. It doesn't matter if the bees come from the same colony, you got the bees that are on the frames, and you have you take the bees that are on the honey, bees that are on the brood, and you set every one of those nukes up the same with the same amount of bees and brood. You just go down through here, and you can do that really quickly. We can set up all those nukes really quickly. Um, if I was gonna set this up for a split, um, just if I was just doing a split for myself, I would I would try to make sure there were at least four frames of brood up here. I, I think that that good cluster of bees is is ideal. About four frames of brood, four four to five frames of brood is going to peak in four to five weeks. So if we kind of back that up, if we're looking toward a honey flow and a split making honey, and we have some queens available, we would back that up and make sure they had a good four frames of brood, and then that four frames of brood would make honey in four to five weeks. So. This depends on what you want to do, but this split's done. I'll come back tomorrow and I'll break off some nukes. I kind of keep in mind if, if we run across a colony that maybe doesn't, um, doesn't really need to be split, we could just get all that brood or maybe brood mixed between the top and the bottom box as long as we got good weather and we could consolidate that brood and you know, make sure they have that six to seven frames of brood all in the bottom with a couple frames of honey on each side. And then we could put a queen excluder in, go ahead and put our put our lid on and just take that top box off if it's you know relatively empty. And then we're still ready to come back and super that hive as soon as we take these splits off. So we're just gonna go down through and do another one really quickly. So if this colony didn't have, you know, the number of frames of brood I wanted in the bottom, I would jump up in the top real quick and I would take an empty frame out down here and I would put it in there to get my parent colony where I wanted to make honey. I can see that this colony has brood from here to here. So that's eight frames of brood. This colony is good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and set this one up. And all these top frames up here are gonna be good resource frames. This colony's not super strong, but we can get a few uh, few frames of brooding bees off of them. Tomorrow, and looky there, right there's the queen. So that's a, a fantastic scenario. Uh, we found the queen on the first frame and she's up here laying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna jump right right back. Go ahead and put a queen excluder on. Uh, right after I put that queen down here. So the queen's in the bottom box. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put these back together. That was easy. There's, uh, there's one other point to consider that hive I just went in, you know, they're not like super strong up in the top. There's not a, a, a ton of brood and bees. I didn't look through the frames, but I can kind of tell by just glancing at them. So tomorrow when I come back, I may not take every bee out of that top box. I may take the few frames of brood and leave the honey frames that, that are remaining. I may shake those bees off and then take those honey frames and, and pack them up on another colony or something like that. That way the, the, all these bees remain here. And as soon as I take this box off, I'm gonna go ahead and stack supers on so all those bees would remain. So if I don't need those bees and those honey frames, 
I could leave those bees here and not take them with this hive for what I'm doing because I'm doing nuke splits. Now, if I was doing a split for, you know, another colony, that would be a different story. I would just take this entire box, set it on a new bottom board and roll with it. So this colony was kind of questionable about doing a split, but it, it was good enough. We can, we can make some, uh, get some resources from it and go ahead and set it up for honey. So I hope you enjoyed uh, watching kind of how I was doing those splits right there. Um, again, thanks to uh, Ricky Marshall with Sweet Wings Honey uh, letting me come down the other day and kind of observe how, how he did it. It's kind of a modified method of the, the way he goes about doing it. Um, but nevertheless, it, it works and you got to figure out what works for your operation. If you have trouble finding queens and you want to do a split, sometimes this may be the easiest way. Um, I always condone using queens or queen cells or virgin queens or something uh, to, to, to do any kind of split with. I, I, I don't condone the, uh, the walk away split method. That's a complete, complete, uh, a complete different discussion. Um, we'll talk about why that's not the preferred method. But nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe, share this video, and look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.